Okay, everybody, welcome to the class tonight. It's a pleasure to be with you. So let's get into rock and roll. Of course, the first thing that we always do is to check about the platform. So this is the class of tonight. And uh, well, yeah, we're just recording that one right now. The homework for tonight is this one, 2.5, okay? So true or false? So it says, read the following reasons why a business plan is necessary. Select true or false. Okay, and then, well, that part is only five questions. Then we have another part that says, in a business plan, should these questions be included? And then there is the question and then the correct answer for that one, right? So that will be it. This part only has four questions. Good. And we're going to check about their attendance. Let me just get there. Here's it. All right. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Oswin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. I'm here, teacher, present. Good. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Good evening, present, teacher. Good evening. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Okay. So, let me just go here. Uh, tonight, we're going to see some videos, uh, and then we're going to discuss about that one, and then we're going to have free practice. Okay. Still pending on the next week. So, I was counting the days. And it seems that we are not going to have classes. It seems, of course, the um, communicate uh, the the company is going to send you something on the chat. So to confirm that one, I believe it's going to be tomorrow, right? So just check into that one, and uh, they don't say anything. Of course, we're going to see each other on Monday. But I was counting the days from the date that we started and the day that we're going to finish. And there is a week missing, so I guess it's the next week. So, anyways, remember that for tomorrow also you are going to bring two or three words. So you can explain and present examples on that one. And we are going to uh, try to, to do a presentation of a piece of news and speak in that way. Today we're going to see some videos. Maybe tomorrow we're going to watch some other videos about that one. So it's going to be like speaking a little bit faster right a little bit faster than presenting that one you can bring your own news so uh you can bring something that you are going to tell to the audience but the presentation on the news has to be kind of fast that's the only thing okay not that long and not that short of course so yeah it's like a regular news uh, two minutes something like that three minutes is good okay uh, and then the other people, since you are just going to speak, uh, they will see if they understood about that one. Okay. Do you have any questions about the activity for tomorrow? No teachers. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Practice is very important. So let's, uh, let's watch the first video. As I was telling you tonight, it's kind of some videos. Uh, and uh, the first one is about the topic that we were checking. So here we go. 
Your business plan is one of the most important documents in your business. You can look on it as the roadmap for your business. It sets out where you want to go, your <coughs> objectives for the next two or three years. It shows you your plan to get there, the strategies you're going to use to achieve your objectives. And it shows you where you are, so you can measure performance and make any adjustments necessary to achieve your goals. Your business plan isn't something you do and then put away in a drawer. It's a working document that you can refer to and make sure you're going in the right direction and following the right path. It's also a great way to give other people an overview of your business and to demonstrate how you're performing. That's why banks and investors ask for a business plan. In this video, I'm going to give you an idea of how you might put your business plan together and take you through each section. However, you ought to know that the plan is often not written in the same order as in the final document. For example, although the executive summary appears as the first section, it's usually written last when everything else is done. We'll come back to the executive summary at the end of the video. The first section we'll look at is the introduction and company overview. You need to include the basic details of your business, your business name, address, website address if you have one, and your contact details. You should also give your legal status, whether you are operating as a sole trader, a partnership, or a limited company. In this section, you also need to explain what your business is about, what you want to achieve, and how you plan to measure your success. Make sure you describe the product or service you are offering and who you are selling it to. The key here is to keep your focus on the benefits your customers get from your product or service, rather than just the features of what it is or what it does. You also want to explain what it is that makes you different and what makes you stand out from your competitors. This is known as your USP, your unique selling proposition. There's much more detail about how to uncover your USP and identify the benefits of your product or service in the module about winning and keeping customers. The next section in your business plan is about markets and competitors. This is where you demonstrate that you've researched your market and understand the environment you're working in. You may want to include a pest analysis here to show which market factors are likely to have an impact on your business. And a SWOT analysis too to show what's important to your business. How to do both of these is covered in detail in the Creating New Products module, so I won't say any more about them right now. A significant part of this section is about identifying your target markets, showing who and where your customers are, and how you can satisfy their needs. This is covered in more detail in the module about winning and keeping customers, but make sure you think as widely as possible so that you develop a diverse client base. You should also include a competitor analysis and explain how you plan to compete in this market. The next section of your business plan is your sales and marketing strategy. This focuses on your target market, where your customers are, and how you plan to promote your business and reach your customers. Again, taking into account their differences. You'll also want to include details of your pricing strategy and a detailed sales forecast. Be specific about what you want to achieve and include a timeline and budgets. It's important you explain how you'll track results and measure your performance. And what about if you don't achieve the sales you'd hoped for? Explain what you plan to do to minimize the risk. A key section of your business plan is operations. This is where you explain how you plan to conduct your business. It includes information about your location, premises and equipment, and explains how you plan to produce, store and deliver your products and services. You should also include an overview of your suppliers, your approach and how you deal with them, as well as your distribution strategies. This is also where you'll include details of the staff you employ, your systems and procedures and what IT support you have. If it's relevant, you could also cover specific information about health and safety, equality and diversity, quality control and note any compliance requirements. It's also useful to outline your future plans and explain how the way your business operates may change over time. Now we come to the financial information section. This is one of the most critical sections and also one that many people find quite daunting. It's a good idea to ask your accountant or business advisor to help you out. The aim is to demonstrate that the business has sufficient cash flow to cover its costs and make a profit. You'll need to show a detailed month-by-month -month cash flow for the first year and a profit and loss statement for the years two and three. 
Make sure both your sales forecasts and predicted expenses are as realistic as possible. Again, it's helpful to include your contingency plans, that what if situation, what if sales are higher than expected, how does that affect the figures, and what if sales are lower than expected, what happens then? The final section is an appendix. This is where you put all the documents and evidence to support your business plan. This may be market research information, any letters you have from potential customers or firm orders already in the bag. You could include references or examples of previous work, price lists, legal documents, policies and procedures, job and person specifications and CVs for key members of your team and examples of promotional and marketing material. Make sure you cross-reference this information to the appropriate section. You don't want people to get confused, do you? So that's all the information. Now you're in a position to do the executive summary. Present it clearly, keep it brief and to the point. It should provide an overview of your business and cover the most important points of your business plan. Make sure you are positive. After all, you want to impress and persuade others. And it can be very useful to tailor this section to your audience. For example, if you are presenting the business plan to your bank to secure a loan, the executive summary should focus on how important that loan is to you and how it will help your business to succeed. Once you've finished your executive summary, your business plan is complete. Make sure you use it, keep it up to date and have it available in a format that everyone in the business can access. After all, as the roadmap for your business, it really is a very useful tool. Okay, what did you get from the video? Are there any comments? It's like a review on things that we checked, but of course it's a very good practice. So what do you get from that? Yes, it's talking about all of the aspects of the business plan and a brief description of how it, each section could be integrated and given the importance of each one, business summary, the budget, and all the details. Obviously, you need to see it more than once to to get all of the information because we don't have the experience, we don't have the all of the knowledge. We are learning, but it's an important important uh, review of all of the concepts. Very good. So, yeah, it's like the review of all the concepts and uh, the parts of the business plan. So remember that not this Friday, but the next Friday that we have classes. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're going to present the, uh, the uh, business plan. I'm sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be kind of important, right? Um, any other comments or opinion? No more, okay? Look at this. This is kind of interesting. Let's give it a shot. Let's see how it goes. Are you ready to take your English skills to the next level? Well, get ready to meet your new virtual language partner, ChatGPT. This cutting edge AI model is like having a personal English tutor at your fingertips. With its ability to understand and respond to natural language, it'll make writing, grammar, and vocabulary exercises more interactive and fun. It's like having a personal English coach who's always ready to help you improve. So don't wait any longer. Let's dive in and see how ChatGPT can help you speak, write, and understand English better. Trust me, you won't regret it. I didn't come up with any of this. You know who wrote the introduction for this video? ChatGPT. In fact, I asked it to write a text for an English teacher introducing ChatGPT to her class, and then it was kind of boring, so I asked it to make it a bit more fun, like an introduction to a YouTube video. And that's what we got. The entire introduction was written by a robot, by ChatGPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. 
Bonjour, ChatGPT. So, what is ChatGPT really? For those who are not that familiar with artificial intelligence, ChatGPT is a type of computer program that is designed to understand and generate natural language. It uses complex algorithm and a large amount of data to generate responses to questions or prompts that it receives. Think of it as a robot that can understand and respond to human-like conversation. And in this episode, I'm going to show you a few amazing ways in which you can use ChatGPT to skyrocket your English practice. It's pretty incredible. So let's get started for real this time. One of the first things that you can do with ChatGPT is practice conversation or practice a natural dialogue. You can actually have it generate scripts for you to practice different conversations in different situations. For example, So we have an example of a back and forth conversation. So what you can do, you can actually read the conversation, see the type of language that is used and practice with it. Or you can ask it to write a conversation at the bank. Hi, I would like to check my account balance, please. Hey, sure thing. May I have your account number and personal identification number? PIN, please. My account number is 123456 and my PIN is 1234. Now, you can also ask it to have a conversation with you and ask it to correct your answers, your writing, grammar, and syntax. Take a look. Another thing you can do is prepare for a job interview together. So you can actually ask it to simulate an interview with you where it is going to be the interviewer, Chad GPT, and you will be answering questions and ask for feedback on your answers. Take a look. By the way, you don't have to remember everything. I have written an elaborate blog post. I have written it, not ChatGPT, with a bunch of different examples on how to use ChatGPT to practice English effectively. And there are a lot more ideas over there. So make sure you check it out. I'll link to the blog post in the description below. All right, so one more thing you can do with ChatGPT is to practice vocabulary. For example, you can ask it for the meaning of a specific word. What is livid? And then you can ask it to use it in a sentence. Give me three example sentences using the word livid. And here is something else that's pretty cool. You can actually copy this text and paste it to any type of text-to-speech software or program. For example, Natural Readers, I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can simply copy-paste it and then have it read it to you. So you can also listen to it and not just read it. The coach was livid when the team lost the game. You can also practice phrasal verbs. Can you write a short text using as many phrasal verbs as possible. You can actually spend a lot of time just asking silly questions and getting fun responses. Be careful. Another thing you can do is to practice grammar with chat GPT. So first you can ask for an explanation on a certain grammar form or tense if you struggle with something. For example, when to use the future perfect tense and you get an, a short explanation but that is not enough you want to see it in examples and one of the best ways to practice grammar and I have an entire video just about that is to repeat certain structures and forms until you understand it subconsciously simply by the act of repetition of the same tense 
in the same context, but not the same sentences. So what I can do is ask it to generate example sentences for me. And then when you get those lists, you can just repeat it again and again and say it out loud or use text to speech and listen to it and repeat it back which is such a great way to practice grammar, especially when you're trying to internalize the tenses that you find it really hard to get and to understand. Sometimes just the repetitions make it easier for you to understand it and ChatGPT really helps with providing you with the resources to practice it effectively. Another thing you can do is practice pronunciation with ChatGPT. So no, it's not gonna give you feedback, but you can create for yourself some resources to practice pronunciation. Let's say you want to practice the R. So what you can do is ask it to write a sentence with as many R's as possible. And then you can read it out loud or use text to speech to have someone read it for you and then you can repeat it. Or let's say you want to practice the difference between sheep ship and reach rich, tense e and lax e. So you can do something complicated like this. Please write a sentence with the words reach, rich, least, list, see, sit, leave, live. And then you just need to read it out loud and practice the difference between the tense E and the lax E within the same sentence. Now, again, just to remind you, everything is listed in my blog post with a lot of additional examples and prompts so that you can use that and you don't have to come up with your own ideas to practice effectively, whether it's a conversation, grammar, pronunciation, and anything else you'd like to practice. Another thing that ChatGPT can do for you is to simplify a complicated text. So for example, you can take an article from the New York Times that you might have some trouble understanding. You can copy paste it into ChatGPT and ask it to simplify the article and then it can rewrite it in a simpler language. You can also write that it's for an intermediate or a beginner level speaker of English and then it will write the text or rewrite the text accordingly. Another incredible thing that ChatGPT can help you out with is writing. So for example, if you need to write an email, you can write a draft and then copy and paste it into ChatGPT and ask it to make it more friendly or to make it more formal, depending on who you're writing to. So <laughs> no more sitting in front of the computer trying to figure out what to write and how to write it. Now, mind you that everything that I suggested here has to do with writing, rewriting, practicing conversation, getting feedback. You can also ask for information, but please take into consideration that it's not always accurate. So this is why I don't necessarily recommend that. If you want to learn English in depth, then maybe you should use some more traditional resources to learn things that are a little more than just the explanation of a word or a certain grammar form. So to conclude, ChatGPT is an incredible tool. I think I said ChatGPT like 600 times today. It is an incredible tool to help you practice English effectively. It's also a lot of fun and it's like a game. You can totally gamify your English practice. However, please remember that it will never replace a real human interaction, which is the essence of communicating in English. It is a great tool for you to practice when you are on your own, when you have no one else to practice with, but it's not ideal to help you learn how to have a real conversation and overcome the fear of speaking with others and generating real fluency, especially when you are the one who is speaking and not just writing. So please remember that no matter what technology may offer, there is nothing like the real human interaction. And by the way, if you want to find partners for a conversation and practice speaking freely to others, you can definitely check out the Influency Community, our free English practice community that is incredible and a safe 
and creative space for you to practice English with real humans. Now let's make it even more exciting and let me know in the comments below, how do you practice your English with chat GPT? Okay, so what do you get from this video? Well, now we are facing uh, the most uh, recent uh, project release because uh, I don't know if you heard that about Bing. Bing is one browser that you have to download and uh, be on the list on, on the wait list, and they will approve if you are ready to to download the app and then uh, start to use Chat GPT. GPT. So it, it's really good because uh, that made your life easier. But at this, uh, in the other hand, maybe uh, those person maybe are making a lazy people because uh, I guess that when we read and we prepare one uh, uh, one file or whatever or one presentation within and we try to to um, make our own research. And when and with this uh, chat GPT is easier. You only have to type that you want to get uh, whatever uh, thing that you uh, will present or something like that. But it's good. It's good to know it because maybe you can compare if you are a, a if you are a, what if you try to work in your own words. Uh, it's really good because you can compare with with another example or something like that. So it's really nice. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, actually, you, yeah, it's uh, you are right. I mean, there are advantages and disadvantages, right? So yeah, yeah I see, for example, in the new generations that they come towards sometimes. I mean, they're totally different right now. I remember yeah. that we were discussing about different uh, generations in the past, right? But now. I mean, I mean, they are totally different. They sometimes they don't read. They want everything to be stayed in the moment. So it's different. I mean, we need to change many things, and this is going to change more, right? as you say. I mean, they are going to get used to just type something, and the answer that it, they get that is it. So they, nowadays, I believe that we go to Google, we Google it, we read five, six articles, and then. Analyze what is the one uh, with this tool. I mean, what they say is what is it, right? So, yeah, maybe they're gonna be lazier, but on the yeah. other hand, it's going to be easier as well. I mean, it's a, it's a very nice tool, so I mean, I'm very excited about that one, but yeah, some people maybe they are going to use it not for good things, or I mean, it's going to impact. Definitely. That, that would be. I don't know if there is another video playing on the background. I don't think so. Let me check. Uh, no, nothing is hitting audio. Oh, okay. I guess somebody else was there. Not on it. Okay, very good. So, any other comments? I was thinking. I was thinking like, like a teacher that uh, if you give an assignment to the students, the student go to ChatGPT and the ChatGPT thing for the students. And for that reason, we need to be careful in our assignments and in the review of, the, of them. But it's a great tool. We can uh, we can go outside of the technology. We can get a part of the technology. We need to include the technology and teaching and, and other activities in, the, in life. Yeah, definitely. Actually, that is something that uh, that is maybe happening already, right? So some students are going to go and look there. Uh, the good thing is that you can go and look there if they are keen, right? So you can check and research where I can find this essay, this reading, and maybe you are going to find the source. If you don't find the source, maybe they wrote it. So, uh, but yes, yes, again, uh, some people there are going to get lazier uh, and that is not good, right? But it's a very good tool. 
Any other comment on this? Maybe I will ask to chat GPT, please write the business plan for me for this and this other. <laughs> Good. Actually, this is yeah. the one, you know, it's kind of very easy to use. Have you ever used this one? I mean, you just need to go mm -mm. up and down one. Create for me, it's the first time hearing about that. I'm not so uh, advocate to look for this time of a season. The only thing I have been trying is the Google Translator. Oh, well, the translator is something very common. Sometimes we want to be sure about some things or, I mean, yeah, it's a nice tool, right? Uh, but I don't trust at, at all on that because as the one in the video was, say, was saying, sometimes they write text as a robot because they, uh, they, they, the way how it's writing, that happened in Google's translator sometimes. I don't know if ChatGPT will be in that way. Uh, well, I believe that by now it actually he says that there are some limitations that may occasionally generate incorrect information or produce harmful instruction or biased content or mm -hmm. limited knowledge of world and events after 2021. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's not perfect. Maybe the thing is that the impact that mm -hmm. it's providing is because it's going to be very accurate in the way that you are going to receive the information. I mean, this is the same that you do when you go to Google, but the problem that with Google, you have 10,000 resources, right? And you need to go and read one by one. And here, I mean, you are going to read the information. It's supposed, it's supposed that you are going to analyze and, and think this is what I'm looking for, or no, I, I need this, but in a different way, so you can uh, go and change that one. So. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, we need to be very careful because information is not uh, correct all the time. So definitely. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the thing is that it's faster. It's going to provide you exactly yeah. what you're looking to do. And uh, that will be it, right? So yeah, it's a good resource. Okay. So um, any other comment on this video? Uh, I think uh, chat GPT, maybe in the future for a uh, Software programs which consume like an API to translation, maybe this chat GPT can uh, use the place of this uh, of the Google API translation, for example, because uh, I think it's um, powerful than the Google translation API because uh, I knew that chat GPT also can avoid the uh, words from the translation and can make the translation like more native, more natural than the, that the Google does. So uh, maybe in the future, we can use this uh, GPT software instead of using the Google translation or the API of translation from Google. Okay, yeah, definitely, I mean, it's going to be integrated with many things. Actually, uh, all the companies, as um, so we first said, are launching some other things that are very similar. Uh, Google just launched something that is called Bard, but it's going to be an artificial intelligence that is going to be actually more powerful than ChatGPT. By now, it's uh, being tested only by marketing companies because they need to check if it's accurate and things like that one. But I believe in one or two years, we're going to have something very robust and very good, very accurate. Of course, there is an impact for that one, right? Because, I mean, maybe next model, you are not going to have a real teacher. You're going to have an artificial intelligence telling you some things. Maybe, I mean, maybe not in the, in the next month, but in the future, some people, they are going to... Uh, lose their jobs because of this kind of technology, right? So it's going to impact in good ways and in bad ways. So that that is for sure. Uh, let's hope for the better, right? And let's hope that people use the technology in a very wise way. Any other comments about the chat GPT? Okay. Would you like to ask something to chat GPT?
please download a business plan for next Friday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how how to solve a quadratic equation, maybe? Okay. I don't remember, I guess it's like this. Yes. That is it? Yes. It is fast. I thought that it was. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> now, 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 right, the equation, I, I don't know. You can write a x square, x square plus seven x plus twelve. Is there? Uh, let me just check. Like, like like this. This is this okay. symbol that is in the first line that are in the in the chat. Maybe you can copy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That. Uh, which one would you like me? X to? x equal b. In that that symbol B square in the in the in the zero line, yes, yeah. No, the next, the next. This one. That that this one, the, the symbol. Okay, it's going to be like this one, right? And I'm going to delete this. Like this? Yes, but omit the, the B and the equal sign. Only X and the symbol in the two. Omit erase the, the equal, yes, and the B, letter B. Yes, like now uh, after the, the number two plus okay. seven X plus 12. Like this? Yes, equal zero. Okay. And, and why solve it, please? Well, I should have copied that one. Here is it. Yes. <laughs> it's very fast. It's very good. I mean, you yes. can ask many things. Huh? Minus 3 and x equals yes. minus 4. Like what? Yes, yes. So that one, that part is accurate. As I was telling you, it's very accurate. Not 100%. <laughs> how the world, how will be the end of the world? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I uh, that was very famous on the news, and I typed that one. So, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, when the humanity will die? I don't know something crazy. Okay. How will this appear? There you go. <laughs> Pandemics are we? Yeah. Don't know that word. <laughs> at, uh, look at this number five. <laughs> Artificial intelligence. <laughs> Nuclear war, of course. Is that your real event? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, every. I mean, all the possibilities are here. Of course, maybe. I mean, maybe you can ask when the humanity will disappear. I don't know the date or. So you can see that it's very interesting, right? Oh my goodness, there is a, an error. Whenever you have that error, if you have an account, you just need to refresh. Ah. You need to make an account. Yeah, but it's just a matter for you to create, like a like an email. Oh, okay. It's going to be just like that. Uh, here it says, it's, it's impossible to predict the exact time. Yes. Maybe next month. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, so it's, uh, the good thing is that it says it's important to know that the survival of humanity depends largely on the actions that would take us yes so, yes, so it's uh, very good you can see it's like actually it's like chatting with somebody right it's like when you mm -hmm. ask somebody something they say, oh, we don't know but we need to be careful about this and this and this so it's going to be I mean 
Uh, is this just working with English or can be switched to a different language? By now, only in English. Ah, okay. But it's a very good thing, right? What else would you like to know? <laughs> Anybody wants me to ask something? <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, sometimes I, I spend time doing some research. Uh, ask for something uh, uh, not concrete, like what is love? Okay. It's going to say, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the song. <laughs> Look at that. The complex and multi-dimensional. Multi-dimensional <laughs> emotion. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> in many ways. This is core love. It's an intense feeling of deep yeah, it's, it's a very good answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's very it can take many forms, you see. Exactly. So it's like chatting with somebody. It's, it's Imagine that you are uh, speaking with somebody there and it's very small, right? But of course, mm -hmm. not perfect. But it's a very good... It always has an answer, right? Yeah. Uh, it's very rare that they say, I don't have an answer for that one. So they tell you, um, well, as I understand or what I can tell you or something like that one. So in that case, you know that it's not exact answer. So they try their best. But it's a very good thing. Uh, yeah, for example, I can ask... Um, I don't know, tell me a joke or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Why don't scientists trust atoms? <laughs> <a good> <laughs> Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. <laughs> All right, this is a very good joke. No, mm. you can ask anything. I mean, actually, imagine this. Um... Business plan. My goodness. That's it. I mean, <laughs> my goodness. If we see in the first video, we saw. Yeah, actually, I mean, it it goes. I mean, imagine how powerful is this that you ask a question, it goes over the internet, the whole internet, and provides you an answer in seconds. Who developed this thing? I mean. It was a company. I don't remember the name of the company. Uh, they were, I mean, they started this one a long time ago, and they launched that uh, last year. Uh, and there is a premium, a premium one that you can, you can pay for. That is going to be a little bit more accurate, and it's going to be good for you to analyze things mm -hmm. or predict things. So it's a very good thing. And I'm. What I'm, is the main the main reason for business failure? Ask the question. Okay. What is the main reason for business failure? Well, look, what I... Let me see. Lack of market demand, poor financial management, insufficient funding, ineffective marketing, lack of strategic planning, poor management, and some recommendations. Uh, with my co-workers, we were joking about this because uh, we are developers and we were talking about uh, this will replace us in, in uh, maybe in, in a few years. We, we don't know, but uh, yeah. uh, with this, this, uh, this tool can generate code. Exactly. If you ask for, for example, you want to log in, and you you can maybe specify what language that you are, yeah. PHP, are you? Yeah, Java, Java, CSS, uh, HTML, what whatever to what you want. You specify the language, and they generate the code for the what what, what do you want? Look at that. <laughs> yes. Look at that. So uh, yeah, you can you can go and look for an answer. You know, I was reading, and this is very interesting. I was reading uh, that the writers in Hollywood they want. I mean, they want. They are not uh, saying this is going to take our jobs. They say that they want to implement this one uh, for for this year. Actually, they say that they want uh, to ask uh, uh, the ChatGPT to to write uh, a script. For a movie, 
but ah, okay. okay they're going to i mean the chat gpt is going to write the whole thing but the writers are going to actually read and uh, correct it uh, it's not that the writers are going to get fired at least it's that's what they say right now right so they are not going to get fired but i mean it's, they are not going to start from scratch so they are going to to uh, read it and say no this part is not good we need this different thing no, it's a good thing. I mean, if, if that is the way, I mean, the only thing that is going to happen is that uh, your job is going to be faster. You are going to be more efficient. So that is a good thing. Uh, some people is maybe uh, getting money with that. Uh, maybe they maybe create prompts with this AI and that prompts put the, 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 the result that the, the AI uh, get to you. And they 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 use the prompt in another AI for generate images, and the images is is selling in some website, for example. You wanna maybe a, an image for or, or our history of, about an alien or an dog, for example. You can the you can ask for the for the history and about the history. You you use the the history in another AI for generate the images, and you create a a book with the picture and you can sell the book this book very true very true and the good thing is that uh, i mean it's not going to be copyrighted because it's going to generate by itself here you are going to adapt some things and that's it right i mean uh, yeah it's going to be a very good thing yes uh, is you want to know how this 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 world you can uh, search the the video for nate gentle they explain about us how the this works Definitely. And you know, uh, there are a lot of machine learnings and artificial intelligence that you can, I mean, by now it's not there, it's not together because, for example, in Google we have something that is called speech to text. So it means that whenever something is written down, it can be uh, translated into voice. So that is another thing. So if you implement this into other things, I mean, this is going to be actually a robot. It's going to be like a robot that is going to be able to to tell you to produce many things. It is a monster. <laughs> monster. This uh, is just uh -huh. yesterday was launched the the AI for Google Docs for ah, Google. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can install in complements and you can, for example, you have a spreadsheet mm -hmm. and you want maybe the the highest salary of a uh, a pile of employees, but you don't use form formulas. You can use natural language for asking to Excel or maybe a spreadsheet and Google. That, that is what you want. And they make the, the work and you can only maybe drop down the result to generate the another result for every row. That is, that is amazing in my end. Yeah, I mean, they are implementing things into this one. So it's going to be a very good. For example, I was reading since I'm a trainer there in the in Google, uh, that in the forms starting today, if you send a test in a form, uh, the uh, the computer is not going to allow you to open any other tabs. You cannot cheat. You need to study. So it, I mean, right now, if I send you a test, maybe one person is going to say, "Oh, I don't know the answer." I'm going to look, Google it, right? So I'm going to look for that one, but. The computer itself is not going to allow you to open another browser, another tab. That is a very good thing. I mean, so you know that the person is at least is not going to be that easier for, to cheat, right? Yeah, but if you, if you are maybe a study at home, <laughs> you can use every tool that you have in your hand, of, of, of maybe a phone, another computer. Yeah. That is very difficult to to avoid cheating of, of studying. That is it. So yeah, but you see how advanced is getting everything, right? I mean, and this this is amazing. I, I tell, I'm i telling you, you should try this and you should uh, get involved more into technology because it's here, I mean. Uh, the, the times of sending <laughs> emails are in the past. I mean, that is, yeah, we still use that one, but many things are coming. A lot of things are coming, so. Then we need to. I have a doubt relating this because I don't know if uh, many users uh, look for the same resume to, to something 
uh, the chat GPT, I guess that will provide you the same, uh, the same, um, the same Answer, example. Uh, yeah, the same information, the mm -hmm. same information, the same words. So I guess that couldn't be. So, uh, for example, like you mean if like again the teacher will ask what love is or what what is love, something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you will see the same answer. It is. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess at the very beginning it's going to provide you the same answer and then you can personalize that one. So you can add more details. So for example, uh, uh, that question, we can say, what is love, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have the same answer. You can the see that it's answer, exactly huh? the same. Uh -huh. But then you can go a bit more deep. Uh, what is love for Latin people, for example? So you can personalize in different ways. So it's going to provide you an answer that is kind of different. So the good thing about this one is that you can add more detail. I want you to tell me the same, but with this different other uh, criteria. So it's going to show you that. For example, you are applying for marketing position, but you want uh, to implement this and this and this and to keep away some other things. So it's going to tell you that one. Hey, there are words in Spanish there. Yes, and and he uh, saved the the context. If you are asking every question that you have, you ask for them. They save the the answers and they get a context about what is you talking about. And that is the way that they, they uh, maybe the, the the next question is related with the uh maybe a three or four question uh, ago, and they answer about you're using the context it's not for every for each maybe question you receive a a different answer you they, they answer you depends of the maybe the question before you you did that is so true so yeah it's going to be related i mean it understands that you were talking about some topic before and now uh, it's going to link the topics so you are going to have more or less what you're looking for. And another thing is that also includes machine learning. That it means that it's going to be trained. So it's going to be like a model that is going to be trained like like Siri, you know, that after a month, two months that you're using that one, it's going to understand more, most likely what are your likes and dislikes and things like that. And it's going to learn when you ask something what you are referring to. So uh, yeah, it's going to be, I mean, if this continues and is, is growing, it's going to be a monster. It's going to be the starting of a new era, definitely. Imagine how amazing is this. Good. Uh, do you have any other, any question about this one or do you want to ask some other things? The first call that one of the programmers do is, one of the first is, uh, uh finding prime numbers as for uh, write a java call for finding prime numbers i'm sorry what is the question that you want me to to ask write a java call java java call for finding or finding prime numbers a uh, finding finding prime numbers <laughs> that is uh i remember that Yes, this is I the first. The college. <laughs> Imagine that one. My God. <laughs> yeah. And the good thing is that since you have the, the code, you can copy the code and, and yes. take it to the computer and run it. I mean, so imagine oh. that you have an error, an error in a code. You can copy here and you say to chat GPT, please find the error. And it's going to tell you, here is the error. And you say, ah, okay, very good. So you are going to save time because in the past you were like, my goodness, where is the error? I don't know, where is this thing? Now it's going to be easier. Of course, it's not perfect, but it's going to help you in some ways. It's very accuracy because we, uh, a coworker used this only maybe, we were, we were joking, but uh, they they use the the code that the, this generate for a uh, a uh, part that in in our work is necessary. For example, to to calculate a, a time token for 
get the the, the last history for a uh, different notification. They they ask for the, the, the code in uh, this generate the code and the, the code was was good. That 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 is the uh, the result that we were expect about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's possible. I mean, actually anybody can use this for your job. I mean, uh, or anything. Of course, uh, we need to be careful again and we uh we are going to use it as a tool. Okay, so that will be mind what I ask you. Is Google spying on people? And that is the answer. Right? They were accused of spying on people in the past. Com the company has consistently denied. Okay, it doesn't say they don't, they deny. They deny any such allegations. So, and they, I mean, it says that Google has taken some serious, implemented some measures to protect data. And also, it says that uh, privacy is a complex issue. I mean, no company can guarantee 100% protection of user data. So, I mean, it's, it's very clear on that one. So, they don't, it doesn't say yes, they are or no, they don't. It's telling you what has happened, the facts that happened in the past. So, a very good thing. Richard, is this is this is, is only for write or speaking? To? By now, it's only writing, but I believe in the next future is going to be also speaking. I mean, you will be able to to speak to that one. I believe that is the next step, definitely. I I feeling in the internet is a uh, there are a new. A new employee in this case is from engineering. Yeah, yeah, we need to be careful about this. Remember that all the information that you enter, I mean, is going to be in a server. So it's exactly what it says here about Google. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, everything that you have on your emails is in a server on Google. Of course, they don't go opening the server thing, reading everybody's email, but every picture that you send, every word that you send is there. So uh, even if you delete it, I mean, there are ways for them to recover that one. For, for example, for legal reasons, uh, when they go to court and the police said, you need to give us, for example, the chat that you deleted a year ago, they will be able to find it there and, and provide it to the police so they can find what did you write or, or anything like that. So, um, and I mean, this is going to also help mean people, bad people, to do certain things. So we need to be careful about that. Okay. Yes, and maybe you have to be careful with the with inform updated information because uh if I are, I don't mistake this the information of this this update is until 2021. Exactly. It's until that day a year. Of course I believe that they are working to um, to update, but I believe it's going to depend on how many people are going to pay for that one. So it's a business, right? So if companies are paying for the service, probably it's going to grow and you are going to have um, more accurate information. That depends. Depends on many things. And this is just a starting point. Um, other things are coming, definitely. Any other question or any other thing that you want to ask to chat GPT? It's a very good thing, right? In mind, you can ask about anything. You can ask about famous people. You can ask about medicine. You, you, you huh? ask for uh, Google spying, right? For Facebook, is Facebook mm -hmm. spying people? Uh, let's see what it says. Of course, they are being accused. I believe it's going to be kind of the, the same thing. Some uh, polite, some polite answers. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, because it, it has not been proved. We know that they have, I mean, you you are saying to your friend, I like rabbits. And then uh, an <laughs> yes. hour later, it shows you, hey, you can buy yeah. rabbits here. I mean, but it's a machine learning. I mean, it, yeah, everything is connected. And if you say something, uh, is getting that is showing you likes and dislikes, but it shouldn't be that way, right? They are listening to you all the time. So 
Yeah, it's kind of the same. Yeah. It hasn't been proved. The, 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 the require that is important. Online privacy is a complex issue and no company can guarantee 100% protection. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and that is true. That is true. I mean, the only way for you to really, really have private information is not to have any device, no computer, no cell phone, nothing at all. I remember a few years ago, a company of TVs, I don't remember which company it was, they were accused that even when the TV was off, there was like a camera that was like getting information for you. Yes. Uh, I mean... That is crazy, right? So nowadays, nobody's alone. <laughs> if you feel alone, you're not alone, right? Uh, everybody's listening to you, of course, because they want your money, right? They sell. What Facebook, for example, does is that they sell, or Google, they sell kind of behaviors for people. Yes. I mean, Latin American people, they are like this. So if you want to sell products, do this thing. That's what they do. It's not that they sell... Uh, your private information as a person so they have the patterns of what you click on or what you want to buy what you search on the websites and then they provide that information so people they like this they dislike this depending on the region depending on your age depending on many things so the information that they have about everybody right now is I mean it's everything and they can just create graphics and create uh, some kind of uh, trend information so they can sell that information to companies but they actually don't sell your information so that's the way it works very good any other question anything else that you want to ask all right so if you have questions there is ja uh, the chat GPT. Remember not to trust that a hundred percent. Okay, let's watch another video. Uh, this is going to be uh, for English pronunciation. So we're going to check different uh, topics today. So let's see how it goes this far. Okay, here we go. In this American English pronunciation lesson, we're focusing on connected speech to help you improve your pronunciation prosody, and communication in English. Part of what makes it difficult to understand native English speakers and what makes it challenging to speak English fast and fluently is the phenomenon connected speech. Connected speech is when the pronunciation of words changes slightly due to the other words that they are next to. For example, stand alone pronunciation will always be different from connected speech pronunciation. So pronouncing a word by itself will have different pronunciation from a group of words in a sentence. This is because the context and the environment alter the pronunciation. In American English, we lean heavily on connected speech, which can sometimes be confusing to second language learners of English who might not be expecting different pronunciation. So to make things easier for you, I'm sharing 17 phrases to learn using connected speech. And knowing these phrases will help you to do two things. One, to understand native English speakers more clearly, and two, to speak English more fluently. So in this lesson, I will be sharing the phrases as well as an example sentence that I would like you to make note of and repeat as practice. If you're ready, let's get started. Could you. In connected speech, we say Q. Q. The same pronunciation as the letter Q. Q. Example sentence. Q tell me where the nearest coffee shop is. Q 
Can you tell me where the nearest coffee shop is? All right, now I'd like you to practice the sentence using the same pronunciation and intonation as me. Don't you. In connected speech, we say, don't you. Example sentence. Don't you wish we had more time in the day? Don't you wish we had more time in the day? Okay, now practice it the way I did with the same intonation and pronunciation. Want to. In connected speech, we say wanna. Example sentence. Wanna grab some dinner after work today? Wanna grab some dinner after work today? Okay, now I'd like you to practice it with my intonation and pronunciation. Got to. In connected speech, we say gotta. Example sentence. I really gotta run or I'll be late for my workout class. I really gotta run or I'll be late for my workout class. Okay, now practice it the way I did with the same intonation and pronunciation. Going to. In connected speech, we say gonna. Example sentence. I'm gonna go to the store in a bit. Need anything? I'm gonna go to the store in a bit. Need anything? Okay, now practice this sentence the same way as I did with the proper pronunciation and intonation. Would have. In connected speech, we say woulda. Example sentence. I woulda made more banana muffins if I had known you were coming. I woulda made more banana muffins if I had known you were coming. Okay, now practice it the same way I did with the pronunciation and intonation that I used. Should have. In connected speech, we say shoulda. Example sentence, I really should have spent more time prepping for my interview. I really should have spent more time prepping for my interview. Okay, now I'd like you to practice it the way I did with the same intonation and pronunciation. Could have. In connected speech, we say coulda. Example sentence, we could have gone camping this weekend. The foliage is out of this world. We could have gone camping this weekend. The foliage is out of this world. Now practice the sentence the same way that I did with the right intonation and pronunciation. Have to. In connected speech, we say have to. Example sentence. You didn't have to pick me up. I could have cabbed it. You didn't have to pick me up. I could have cabbed it. Now practice it the way I did with the same intonation and pronunciation. Can you. In connected speech, we say can you. Example sentence, can you help with Thanksgiving prep this afternoon? I could really use a hand. Can you help with Thanksgiving prep this afternoon? I could really use a hand. Now practice it the same way as I did with the right pronunciation and intonation. Would you. In connected speech, we say would you. Would you. Would you mind turning the music down? It's a bit loud. Would you mind turning the music down? It's a bit loud. Now practice it the way I shared with you with the same pronunciation and intonation. Will you. In connected speech, we say will you. Example sentence. Will you subscribe to our YouTube channel? Will you subscribe to our YouTube channel? Will you subscribe to our YouTube channel? Now practice it the way I shared with you with the same pronunciation and intonation. Do you. In connected speech, we say do you. Example sentence. Do you take milk and sugar in your coffee or just drink it black? Do you take milk and sugar in your coffee or just drink it black? Now practice it the way I shared with you with the same pronunciation and intonation. Won't you. In connected speech, we say won't you. Example sentence. Won't you stay for a cup of tea or a glass of something? Won't you stay for a cup of tea or a glass of something? Now practice it using my intonation and pronunciation. Did you. In connected speech, we say do you. Some people also say did ya, depending on where you are in the US. Example sentence. Do you say something or are my ears playing tricks on me? Or did ya say something? Do you say something or are my ears playing tricks on me? Now practice it with my intonation and pronunciation. What did you. In connected speech, we say wadja. Example sentence. What'd you do to your hair? It looks different in a good way. What'd you do to your hair? It looks different in a good way. Okay, now practice it using my intonation and pronunciation. How did you? 
and connect to speech, we say, how'd ya? Example sentence. How'd you lift the couch all by yourself? You're insanely strong. How'd you lift the couch all by yourself? You're insanely strong. Now practice it the same way that I did using my intonation and pronunciation. So those are 17 phrases plus example sentence that you can repeat in order to practice connected speech. Not only will you start to use connected speech in your own communication in English, but you'll also be more attuned to it when native English speakers use connected speech in real life. Have fun while practicing these phrases and start to pay closer attention to other words and phrases as they're being spoken in sentences. You'll be more equipped to notice and replicate the connected speech once you practice this linguistic phenomenon yourself. All right, advanced English learners, thanks so much for joining me for this lesson. Which phrases will you use first? Do you think you'll start implementing them as quickly as in your next conversation? Did anything here surprise you? Feel free to share that with us in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next one where we're going to continue advancing your English together. Until then, keep up the awesome work, and I'll see you soon. Okay, what did you learn in this video? My God, so it's not correct when I when you see those uh, sentences using gonna, gotta. Uh, the thing because is... I've seen those written down. Uh, yeah, the thing is that this is informal uh, speaking, right? So it's not correct. I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. Grammarly it's... speaking, I mean... Yeah, gra grammarly speaking, I mean, it's not formal, it's not correct. It's like when you say in Spanish, voy a la tienda. So, you understand, right? So, exactly, and, but it's like if I grab voy a la tienda. Exactly. So, <laughs> the thing is that... So people, I know that with you. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the same, actually. It's exactly, it's not correct, it's not formal English, but people do it. I mean, that is it. I mean, for example, here in El Salvador, we say va. But the pressure you give writing those things, I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I, I was explaining. I mean, this is informal. If you are with your friends, it's correct. Some people, they speak fast and some like that. If you are in a, in a job interview, definitely that is not. Exactly, that's not true. That, exactly. Uh, but the thing is that, for example, yesterday we were talking about some uh, listening exercises. And sometimes uh, one of the problems that we had is that one, that we were not able to get the words because they link the sounds that happens in in a lot of places in spanish in english maybe not in japanese but yes in many languages that happens a lot sometimes and we need to maybe not to speak like that but we need to understand when people they they use that kind of things right mm -hmm. so because they do it i mean they do it a lot and maybe, well, um, it, here I believe that we all speak kind of the same because uh, we speak like a, not very formal, but we pronunciate the words correctly. We speak very slow, paused. But if you go to other country, that is not going to happen. I mean, they are going mm -hmm. to speak very fast and they are going to use this kind of sounds. So sometimes you are, that is where we say, I'm sorry, could you please repeat? I didn't get, I mean, for example, if you don't get at the beginning, did you? You go to the park. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. So th those little things uh, we really need to practice. We really need to practice. Yes, it's a good idea to speak the way that we speak here, but we need to understand and realize that people are going to speak like that, and we need to we need to understand that kind of thing. So that is not is not formal. That is like this word, you know. Uh, have you ever heard that word? I'm going to write it here in the chat mm -hmm. uh, for every everybody. Mm. This one, ain't. Oh, yeah. I mean, that they is a word. Uh -huh. You know what is that one, right? Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't remember if I... Uh, in, in, Negating? I don't know. No, please explain. I don't remember right now. Very well. So this is an example. She ain't my friend. So uh, this is like the verb to be. She isn't my friend. Okay. 
but this is very informal. I mean, you are not going to find that word in any English book. It's not going to be there. Mm. Right? I've been teaching for a long, long time, and I have never found that in an English teaching book, but exists. And mm -hmm. people, they use it. Most likely, then, the south of the United States, they use this this word a lot. Mm -hmm. a lot. She ain't my, she's my friend, she ain't. So they, they don't say she isn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah, we need to. We need to know those little things. So we move on sometimes. Sometimes a little word is maybe the difference between one or the other one, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Any other thing? Any other comment on the video? What did you get from that one? What maybe is um, a lot of confusing for us because uh, we try to mem memorize uh, a, lot of, a lot of things, you know. But uh, I was confirming um, about yesterday and these videos, I maybe I, I guess that I understand the message. But yesterday I didn't get it. To be honest with you, I was lost. And I know that it was British, but it's very different. Now she was talking about a connected speech, mm -hmm. but the explanation it was very clear. But yesterday I was lost. Oh uh, yeah, the reason for that one is is this. Okay, uh, in this video, the one that we watch today is teaching. She's explaining. It's like when I'm I'm speaking with you and I'm explaining. I speak slow. I am very. I'm I'm trying to do my best so you understand. Mm -hmm. And the other one, since that was a test, that was tricky. It's not going to be very clear. They are going to use some words to confuse you. So sometimes in the I I remember. If you remember the in the audios that we checked, sometimes there were four uh, answers, and they use words in the audio that were in the four sentences, and that is because they really want to know that you understood. So uh, it's on purpose. On purpose is is tricky. It's mm -hmm. not going to be easy, and that is going to happen when you do the TOEFL. Of course, it's not going to be British English. I, I know that that makes it more difficult because the accent sometimes they say words that are different words uh, and definitely is going to be it is more difficult for but that is the way that is going to be in the TOEFL so you are going to have for example the TOEFL has three parts in audio one an audio and like this uh, possible answers then uh, there is another part that you are going to listen to a conversation and answer um the, uh, there are answers for that one, but they are going to be kind of confused, like this one. And the third part, you are going to have an audio and you are going to answer two or three questions at the same time, like the last one. Uh, and, I mean, you have seven seconds. You listen to the audio, and then if you didn't get it, don't think about it. Go to the next. So the purpose on the tests are to confuse you, to check if you really understood. But when whenever we saw a video like this, I mean, a teacher is always trying to to be clear. So they speak slow. They try to tell you things. And that's why, for example, she has the, the letters of the video below, right? Because she wants you to understand that one. If there is a word that you didn't get it, you can look for that one uh, and then check what is going to be the meaning. So mm -hmm. it's going to be totally different. Okay. And that is the good thing about communication. I mean, English, I mean, is going to be totally different. But that is a very, a very good question. I mean, because, uh, I mean, the material that we do is going to be totally different depending on what we're going to do. And if you realize, for example, when you are speaking with me, we understand each other. But when sometimes we speak with each other on the classmates, with the classmates, sometimes because of the pronunciation, because of the accent, sometimes because of the word order, we didn't get it, so it's, it's like, could you please repeat that one? That is also very common because they speak uh, in their own 
accent, pronunciation, grammar that they know. So that makes it kind of difficult as well. Good. Any other comments, opinions, or what did you get from the video? Okay, tomorrow we have an exercise. Well, we have two homeworks. The first one, as you may remember, um, is that you are going to bring two or three words, new words, explain the words, and provide examples on those. And the second one is that you are going to bring a piece of news and tell the news, but not only reading. It's going to be in the way that presenters, news presenters do that. So I'm going to show you some videos about that one so you understand what is that about. So let me check. Okay, this, you know, let's check the other one. It's not this one, but this one. All right, here we go. Look at this. Hey everybody, I'm meteorologist Vince Condella, and this is another edition of Behind the Scenes at Fox 6. And in this edition, we're gonna talk about the teleprompter. This is one of our studio cameras. And on the front of the camera here, you see words. This is the words to the newscast that the news anchors would read. The lens of the camera is behind this one-way mirror. It points out to where the news anchors are, but as they look towards the camera, they see the words to the newscast. Those words begin in the newsroom. Reporters, news anchors, and the producer of each newscast write the copy that is read by the anchors. It's a collaborative effort. The producers organize each newscast into the lead story, the second story, the third story, etc., and those news scripts on the computer rundown appear on the teleprompter. During the newscast, the news anchors have laptop computers and iPads on the news set with the ability to rewrite certain news stories as updated information comes into the newsroom. The speed of the teleprompter, how fast the words scroll across the camera, is controlled by a member of the production staff in the studio. So if the news anchors have a copy of the script in front of them on their iPads, why do the words also need to appear on the camera? It's all about eye contact. Well, it's important because it's it's important to make the connection with viewers. When you make that direct eye contact, you build a trust, you build a rapport, and therefore the viewers are more likely to connect with you, to believe what you say, and to really kind of build a, a bond with you, and that's important. It's something that you can't do if you don't have that eye contact. So if we're looking down all the time, we just can't do it. Now, if the teleprompter goes down, it's important to have something in front of you because we don't memorize very well. <laughs> It's always good to have a backup plan. Okay, so you see here that the anchor, that is the name of the presenters of the news, the anchor, what they do actually is, there are two things that they do. To look pretty, nice, and to read. That's what they do. Of course, uh, they are trained on that one, right? Because they are very professional there in front uh, and they look at that camera that has the teleprompter so they read they read and that's the only thing that they do all right so in a very good way so that's what you're going to do and uh, as you can see for example in this video it was very short this i believe was in the middle i guess that you understood the idea but you didn't understand everything but it's because they speak in a normal way since they are not teachers they are speaking and i mean as you speak English, I mean, they believe that everybody speaks English. So, uh, yes, and they speak a little bit fast sometimes. So, And that's what we're going to do tomorrow. You're going to come and read. But you're going to read in a way that is like the news. Let's watch another video. But before that one, do you have any questions on this? Or do you have any comments on how they work? Is it important that the, uh, the presenter need to, um, like, like you say, need to be trained because uh, the text is uh, continuously, continuously. When when do the stop? Maybe there are some calls, but uh, they need to give the sense, give the intonation, and uh, they don't have all of the information. Only word by word. 
this is used even though for 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 uh, some uh, public worker like like, like uh, I don't know the senators or something like that that have this kind of device, but uh, it, it's not easy. It's not easy. There there are some stories like uh, uh, the. The girl that uh, say the the notice I don't know is her husband or or her dad was dead in an accident, and they was given the news, and uh, they, they need to 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 uh, finish the news before cry. It, it was so 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 difficult, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, you're right. I remember that one. That the the girl was she was an anchor. And she was there in, in, on the TV, I mean, uh, live, reading the teleprompter. And in the moment that she read the name of the person that died, she realized it was her father, right? It's like, oh my goodness, that's my father. But she had to continue. And in the in the commercial, she went and called and uh, she was not coming back. So, and as you see there, I mean, you can see, you can believe, you might believe that this is a very easy job just to read the news, but it's not right. You need to, as you say, read with the right intonation, with the right. I mean, when you see the news, you you look at them very professional, right? You believe that they know what they're talking about. They don't know, but they they fake it very well, right? They are there and they are very professional. And you are looking at the news and saying, "Oh my goodness, look at that one," but they're just reading. But it's not just reading. I mean, it's a, in a very professional way. I was in a in a program, this morning program of TV TCS. I was in a, a program from a, a company that I worked for, and uh, we were interviewed by by Gerardo Parker, the, the the staff, and they don't know who you are. Uh, the 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 organizer give them a card at a a card that where is the information and and they need to read so fast and make some idea and, and ask the question, but but they, they don't care about what what are you what are you say, but it, it's an important experience. You need to be so nervous. You need to be accurate, but this guy it don't matter what is happening. They get all the information they need. They, they don't have prompter, I, 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 at least in that segment of the of the program, but uh, they have the cards, the cards on the, where I have the, all the information. That is true. I mean, you are so right. They are like actors, right? Yes. That whenever the camera is on, it's like, thank you for coming. We are here with this man that is doing this and this. And tell me about that one. <laughs> and you are there. And then you finish it. Goodbye. The next one, right? Uh, let's go to the next. And they don't know. I mean, they in the moment they're like, oh, okay, this is this and this. Okay, let's do it, right? So in my whole profession is that one. That yes. they when they are in front of the camera, they look very, very secure, very nice of the because of the experience and the training that they have. Uh, but it's a very interesting thing. Yeah, you are right. Good. Let's uh let's watch the other video. Here we go. Hello there, this is your chance to try your hand at being a presenter for ITV News here in the Channel Islands. It'll give you an idea what it's like to be here in the studio each night. So first, I'll read the introduction to our top story and then it's your turn to have a go. On one side of the screen you'll see me and on the other side there's the auto cue which is scrolling the words so you don't have to remember them. Watch it first, then we'll start again for you to try. 15, stand by to roll. Roll, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. On air, 10 on the titles, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Cue presenters. 
Hello, good evening. Welcome to ITV News. Our main headline tonight, the school day in Jersey will be extended from next term. Politicians have decided to add an extra hour of lessons Monday to Friday to make up for time lost because of coronavirus. Classes will also be held on Saturday mornings. Teachers are welcoming the decision, but some students have told us they will boycott the extra lessons and are considering staying away from school altogether. Claire Burton has our top story. These students will soon be spending longer in class after the government announced its... So that's what it looks like with me reading the story. Now it's your turn. Read the script as the auto cue scrolls up the screen. 15, stand by to roll. Roll. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4... Three, two, one, zero. On air. Ten on the titles. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Q presenters. These students will soon be spending longer in class after the government announced its... So that's what it would be like to present the programme on your own, but most of the time we have two presenters in here. This time you need to fill in the gaps when I stop speaking. 15, stand by to roll. Roll. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5... Four, three, two, one, zero. On air. Ten on the titles. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Q presenters. Hello, good evening. Politicians have decided to add an extra hour of lessons Monday to Friday to make up for time lost because of coronavirus. Classes will also be held on Saturday mornings. These students will soon be spending longer in class after the government announced its... And that's a taste of what it's like to be a presenter. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe one day you'll be here in the studio reading the news every night. Bye for now. Okay, what do you think about this one? Did you practice? I mean, did you do the exercise? <laughs> Hey, yes, yeah. I, I, I would I like did. to do it. Um, uh, uh, is, uh, you need to be careful with your breath because <laughs> you lost the air in the middle of the phrases. Eh? Wow, it, it, it's, it's so significant. And, and it's a chore, chore uh, news, but uh, it's difficult. Yeah, actually, that is, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, as I was telling you, it's reading, but it's not the, the regular reading, right? So when we read sometimes here in the uh, in the slides, sometimes we stop, sometimes we're fast, sometimes we we get some mistakes. But there, I mean, it's like in front of the camera, it's like, hello, welcome. My name is Sharik, and I'm going to talk to you about how the coronavirus is exploding. In the, I mean, like that one, right? And yes, because you are in a microphone, you have to be, I mean, there are lots of things that you need to be careful about that one, right? Okay, any other comment on that one? I'm looking for something else that I have, but I don't have it here anymore. Let me just check. Oh, not this. 
I have one, but I don't know where is it. Let me just turn. tomorrow we need to present uh, news like that? Uh, yes, you need to present some piece of news. Uh, it's going to be like uh, whatever you want. Not that short and not that long. Okay, So you can practice before two or three times, I don't know, and I'm going to give you time. What is important, and that's what I want to present you here, uh, is to speak in a normal way not that slow. Uh, it's very important that you speak a little bit fast, not that fast, because everybody has to understand. At the end, we are going to ask everybody what was about the news, if they understood. So my best advice for you is to bring something that is interesting, uh, not that with vocabulary that is not that complicated, right? Something like that will be very good. Let me check if I can show you this one. attorney is the first person to indict a former president. Uh, Donald Trump may become, depending on the case, the first former president acquitted of a crime as well. That would have major impact politically and legally, but it depends now on how the legal system conducts itself. And when we talk about the legal system, I mean, this is the result of a nearly five-year investigation. Do you think that the fact that this has taken so much time at all gives any fodder or support uh, to those who are saying this is all just political, this is not real, there's no there there? Uh, it does, Lindsay. I, I think if, if you are a supporter of Donald Trump, you are looking at this indictment brought by a man who ran for the office to use the power against this, against Donald Trump. He boasted that he had sued Donald Trump before, that that was a qualification for him having this office uh, in order to investigate Donald Trump. That, that's generally not the way Americans, they may disagree a lot, but they understand at a very primary level in their understanding of our country that that's not fair. That, that's not the way the law should work. Now, the, the Manhattan District Attorney will have his day in court as well and present what he uh, understand, presumably believes is a solid case and a legitimate case and the right case to bring. Uh, but yes, the way this prosecution was brought and the nature of the prosecution, Donald Trump is accused uh, of paying $130,000 through an intermediary to a woman to have her keep silent about their affair. My hunch is he's not the first wealthy New Yorker to do that. Uh, and the question is, is this the right use of prosecutorial resources in this case, especially given the political background? So, yes, the, the tangled journey of this case to indictment is already obviously inflaming a country already inflamed. It is once again up to the prosecutor now in the legal system to reassure people as much as he can that this was the right thing to do. But just a quick follow-up to you there, Terry, because I guess the question is, what if campaign funds were used to make that payment. Does that make a difference? Well, well this is not like, this is more like an interview. Uh, let me see if I can find, but uh, you can see the way that they speak. I mean, they sometimes speak a little bit fast, but they uh, enunciate the words clearly. So everybody understands. Uh, it's like, actually it's like being a teacher, right? When, you have, uh, when you're a teacher, you are explaining something. Sometimes you go up and sometimes you go down. So everybody understands that kind of thing. And the intonation is very important when you're speaking and when you are telling something to people, I mean, like not in a conversation, but, but when you are presenting, because uh, in that way, everybody's going to be able to understand what you're talking about. I mean, if you are presenting like, yeah, well, today we're going to speak about some news that we're going to, I mean, people, are, they are not going to get it. But if you come and say, well, uh, a new fungus has been found in the United States and it's resistant to all kind of medication so we don't know what we're going to happen and if they're going to be able to find some solution on this problem okay if you do it like that yeah uh, that's the way that you need to practice okay so it's going to be like uh, intonation is very important that is a very very important when you are speaking in an audience uh, and this is like the first practice that we're going to do about that one imagine that you are speaking in an auditorium 
in front of many people, something like that. Uh, it's different from a class, right? Here, you, I mean, as a student, you can speak and stop and ask me. But when you are in front, a lot of people presenting things, uh, then you need to be prepared. I mean, you need to speak clearly. You need to ask uh, questions, to answer questions. And intonation is very important. Uh, it, it's exactly as when you present any topic. So you are saying something in five minutes and everybody is understanding depending on the way that you are going to speak. So that is like the main point of the exercise. Do you have questions about that? Okay, now question, which is very good. So now we are going to practice. We have free practice. We have a few minutes. Very good. Uh, we spoke already with some of you. Uh, let's see who haven't I spoken with. Ana Claudia. Yes, teacher. Hello, how are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. And thank you for asking. How about you? I'm very well as well, you know, very nice. So, um, yeah, let's speak a little bit. So the first question I'm going to ask you is exactly the same that I was asking to other people here in the class. So we're going to start from with that one. So uh, who is Ana Claudia Gonzalez? How do you describe yourself? My goodness. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me just close one thing here. Yeah. Well, I'm going to... Woman is a one person and uh, some a responsible woman that um, I don't, I always, even I didn't decide for it, but I always uh, fight for things that I want. Uh, I always learn from uh, everyday lessons. Uh, I've been, uh, uh, putting myself in situations that I didn't know that I was able to achieve. Uh, for example, talking about uh, situations like uh, uh, my job or situations around my studies or situations for, yeah, mostly my job. Because sometimes I've been forced, so I've been pushed situations new for me and and at the time every time I was I was I was facing new things I always say okay let's do it let's see what happens <laughs> and let's see what I have what I learned of this situation and sometimes works sometimes no it's not working but always there is a lesson on everything right now I'm just a uh, Cheating uh, every day. I mean, cheating because uh, my job, I know exactly how it goes on a daily basis. I know what I have to do. And I'm trying to enjoy every day. And if I achieve my goal, it's okay. If I can do more, it's okay too. If I'm not achieving my goal, it's okay too. I'm not going to not sleep or not be in peace with myself. Mm -mm. Don't worry. I've learned a lot of things during all this time, but I'm mostly an easygoing person. Okay, very good, interesting. Yeah, and yeah, sometimes that happens. Sometimes we are different from the ones that we were in the past. Sometimes, yeah, we get stressed because of many things. And sometimes, I mean, we just need to focus on the future, right? What's going to happen mm -hmm. next and things that was very good. Mm -hmm. How do you think you're gonna be in the next 10 years? In the next 10 years, well, I'm trying to save. I, I have saving accounts thinking in, in my future because I understood and I understand that I'm not going to depend on, uh, I don't know how to say this, but the, the, the money the, the, the people receive on a, on a monthly basis, pension? The retirement fund. A oh, retirement fund, okay. I'm not uh, thinking or basing my future in uh, thinking in a retirement fund. I'm doing my own retirement fund because also if I'm able to, 
uh, put my money to, in a situation that can continue growing, that would be okay. But also it's because I want to be, uh, I want to be good. I, I want to make sure that I will have all what I need. Um, making this with enough time ahead. And for example, right now with, uh, I have a, a, a co-worker, we always look in because we learn. In my case, I've learned from my past experience uh, what is to lose money, how to, uh, I, I was like in my personal rent, see? I don't know if this works, okay? Yeah. And I was in a deep, deep, difficult situation, financial situation, but I learned from that. And now, uh, always, I I learned a lot and I had to also um, study and uh, achieve and complete some courses about financial things, economy things. Uh, and now I'm... I'm looking for all the best ways to use my resources in a best way, but also saving money, looking into the future. And for example, we have a plan with Walmo, my colleague. <laughs> we are we started this plan this year and it's saving five cents every day. So you are um, you are uh, able to say like around three thousand dollars at the end of the year because you say five cents uh, January the first, ten cents January the second, fifteen cents, and so on and so on. Every day you are adding five cents of the year to the to the day during the year, and uh, of course during uh, October, November, and December, uh, mostly in December, last the last two weeks, every day you need to add like seventeen dollars or eighteen dollars per day. So our goal is to, for example, if I'm earning good uh, because of my of my goal and I'm earning a good bonus, I can take advantage and add to my saving account what it will be the equivalent to the last week of December. Or I can say what will be one or two weeks of October this year. So, and I will going to be adding to my saving account because I we want to prove ourselves with our colleague who will be winning, who will be able to achieve that goal. And making the, the math, uh, you are able to, to save $3,000. Just imagine if you save uh, 10 cents per day. So uh, thinking in, in that way, uh, in, in, with your question, maybe in 10 years, because that money, I don't want to touch it by anything. So that money will be for entire purposes of retirement and thinking and just imagine 10 years, maybe I can, it's not, it's not impossible to have a fund of $30,000. $30, it's not impossible if you make it your purpose. And if you ask me what I will do at the time, to enjoy, to travel, to stay uh, in peace with me, continue being, trying to learn additional things like I'm doing right now. <laughs> that 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 is one of my first uh, goals that I have, in, I have in mind. Very good, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems that you, yeah, it's, it's very interesting because you are also thinking about the future and that is a very important thing because, mm -hmm. yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. So you can see that uh, with the world is changing in many ways, hopefully for the better, but I'm not that, mm -hmm. that sure, right? So yeah, we need to be ready. Mm -hmm. Very good. And um, what makes you happy? To sleep enough <laughs> to sleep enough to rest uh and to travel too i like to travel it doesn't matter if i travel in my country to meet new people to have new experiences if i have, have the opportunity if i have the opportunity to go uh, outside that would be great 
but I also enjoy if I can go to the next town uh, in my country, even though if it's a new place for me, if I can uh, stay or I can pass a good day with friends or colleagues, that would be okay. So, okay. That's very good, very interesting, very nice. Yeah, but mostly sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sleep is very nice. Huh? You know, I enjoy that one now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you, Anna Claudia, for okay. your sharing. Uh, let's see. Um, Fernando Marvin. Hello. Hey, how are Good you? Evening. Good evening. Um, I'm fine, teacher. But, but but fine and lay as always <laughs> yeah yeah i know that yeah these days are kind of difficult i hope you have vacation so you can rest a little bit so um yeah next week is vacation good for you because i don't have any vacations but anyways that's the way it is right <laughs> yeah now uh, in, in february i i get a, a new job so this this year is the first time that in 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 Hollywood, but only um, maybe I don't know, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, mm. I will be I will be resting because okay. in my in my previous job I I had to 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 work. Yeah, yeah, I understand you. I I feel you. I mean, that's the way that happens to me, and I believe Jose Alfredo and Ana Claudia also they are gonna work on that one. So. Um, but that's very good that you are going to rest. So those days, enjoy, be with your family, do whatever you want, and rest is very important yeah. to rest. I will try because I, I have a a birthday. My sons uh, will be my okay. sons will be eleven years old on April six. Nice, exactly so, for those days. <laughs> exactly for vacation, so. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, and this weekend I I had to to do a plan for for that day. Perfect. That's very good. Sounds like a very good idea. Yeah, you know, but the 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 bad news is all the the places in the in the beach are full, and it's expensive in these days. But that is true. Yeah, everything is very expensive. <laughs> yeah, I would try to. To do a memorable party or something like that. Very good. That's nice because yeah, those little moments, they are priceless. So it's very good. Yeah, very priceless. Priceless. Okay. The first question, as usual, is uh, who are you? I mean, how do you describe yourself? Uh, since I may be a, a workaholic. And a family man. So this is my two characteristics that I I think that it represents me because I I try to do my my job in a in a better way. So sometimes I must admit that I am a perfectionist because in all my tasks I. I like to I like to do very um and I'm very good very good and I try to provide to my family all the that they need that's in my life in this time okay and, very good uh -huh, go ahead and some hobbies you know reading watching series movies um learning English so. This this is me. Very good, very interesting, very nice. I feel you because I'm also workaholic. You know, my boss sometimes she tells me, "Go home, my friend. Why well, are you <laughs> here?" And it's like, "I'm. I need to finish this thing." She was kind of, I don't know, surprised that I haven't taken any vacations in four years. I say, "I need to finish this and this and this," and also I I haven't had. Uh, uh, sick leave, you know, uh, incapacidad uh, since 1916, oh. since 20, since 2016. So oh. if I'm sick, I go to work always, yeah. all the time. It's like me. 
Yeah. By, by, by the way, I, I, I mentioned that I get a new job in, in February. Yeah. So I I quit of my previous job. Mm -hmm. So but I um complete. Uh depends. Uh complete. Uh, uh, el tiempo reglamentario. Ah okay, uh, you yes. ah, okay, you didn't get the, the regular time. Uh the regular time for, for quit. Ah okay. Yeah, okay, the regular time for quit. So and in my um, finiquito, I don't know how to say. Uh, yeah, there is a word for that. I don't remember by now, but this is like, like the liquid. I don't remember. There is a name for. It. I would remember. But in that in that payment, I received uh, a very good amount because I had eighteen days of vacation without without enjoying. So. It was a good part <laughs> because I don't have the time for vacation in my previous job. So, but at the end, it was a a very good uh, um, payment or remuneration. Yeah, payment. Yeah, the the, the mm -hmm. final payment. Very yeah. good. That is good. Yeah, and uh, well, the good thing is that you are in a different job, and of course, you are going to achieve many many things. Oh yeah, yeah. This this new job is is better because the uh, obviously money, but uh, the the responsibilities are are very are more important than the previous because in this case I have I had people people in charge and I have a lot of projects in charge so it's a bit of a step on, on my professional career. Very good, congratulations! So I wish you the best, and I'm very sure that you are going to do a very good job. Okay, thank you, teacher. But thank you for sharing and. Okay, my friends, we are going to uh, check the attendance. Do you have any questions for me before we finish? No questions. No, teacher, no questions. All right. So let's check the attendance and let's uh, go uh, to bed. So Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present, teacher. Good. No, I've been... Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Okay. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Okay, my friends. Uh, well, the one one of today is going to be for Jarvin Isaac. So it was a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful day, uh, a wonderful night, actually. And see you tomorrow. Dream in English. Thank you. As well, teacher. Good evening to everyone. Good evening. Okay, hey. how are you? Everything is fine, teacher. What about you? Uh, well, very tired, but very well as well. So nice. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. <laughs> okay, okay. So oh, well, you have the experience about this one. So let me ask you uh, for first of all, uh, do you feel that you are moving on, that you are learning? Yes, teacher. I think I am learning because I have to be honest, and these two weeks that we start the, the module, I only be more presential that participate, but I am learning, I am listening, and so I they think this is my principal problem, but the listening. But I feel right now that I, I am learning 
Step by step, I am growing my English. I, I feel that. Very good. I'm happy to hear that one. So, and do you have any questions that, I mean, on the module or on previous model that you want to ask anything about any topic? Right now, no teacher. About the model, everything is clear. I only have to say sorry because I can participate a lot of uh, that I want to do it, but that's with uh, is a little bit hard because I am in the and I am studying the university. I am in an exam and this week for the job is crazy <laughs> because it's an is the end of the month and we have to make the inventory before the, the vacation and I have to do a lot of things right now. So for that reason I am tired, but I am here. That it that is the important thing. Definitely, that is the important thing. So I'm very happy to hear that one. So and uh well, do you have any other questions for me? I mean, is there anything else that I can do for you? Uh for example, this like I said before, I, I would like to improve my listening. The for example, the 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 web that you shared yesterday, I was checking today, it is so good. I don't remember the name, but I take a picture yesterday and I was watching today when I had a free time and it's a good, they have a lot of activity, a lot of stuff to do and it's amazing. Very good. That is something that actually is going to help you. I mean, if you practice, I mean, there are many tests, listening tests or, or videos yeah. that you can watch. Uh, maybe one advice that I can tell you is not to watch videos that are too complicated. For example, if you are watching videos about technical things that you are not so familiar, that is going to be difficult for you and maybe you get frustrated. But yeah, it's a very good uh, uh, exercise to watch videos with the subtitles and then try to see if you get the pronunciation of the words. And also, uh, I mean, tests definitely are going to be something that- But gonna... for example, in that website, the, the speaker are so faster and so the, 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 they, the, how how can I say the pronunciation is different. It's like you say yesterday, maybe this pressure, and so mm -hmm. so for that reason. But it's good to to hear another another accent about the the the, uh, the language. That is very good. Yes, actually, that is something that everybody needs to. Do. I mean, sometimes uh, we are so familiar with some accent, but I mean, if you uh, listen or uh, watch videos about people in Ireland or in Finland or many other countries or Latin America. I mean, Mexican people speaking English is totally different, right? So it's a very good exercise that you can do. Yes. If, for example, teacher, I would like to know, uh, I would like to ask you, how can I improve my vocabulary? Because I, I feel it's so short. Well, uh, watching video is also a very good idea. I mean, if you watch videos on YouTube and you get the subtitles, the, the closed mm -hmm. captions, uh, every time that you see a new word, you need to look for that one. You need to understand what is that word. And the good thing that is in the video, since you are going to see the whole conversation, uh, you will be able to, to relate that one with other words. So you understand the usage mm -hmm. of the word. So that is a very good exercise. Okay, okay. Thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Perfect. So... Uh, any other thing before we finish? No, this is this is all. Okay, so it was a pleasure to be with you. I hope you have a very good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Have a good night. See you so tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye now.